No, so we, we'll, we're going to have different songs. We're going to have a full April uh, because we have pen relays to run up to. But after that, they they want to consolidate to just one. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah. I need to get some dry needling in my hip. Give me a yeah. shot or something. So last time you ran was last No, I ran over the weekend, but I haven't ran since Saturday. Like my hip is killing me. Oh. I think I did something you to my hip. Tell, you, I don't know. You didn't tell Corey? No. Oh. I, mm. You hurt yourself? Oh, I think I hurt my hip like really badly. I don't know what I did, but like it's oh, like no. shooting pains. I tried running yesterday and I had like a shooting pain that went from my hip all the way down to my thigh. I could only run like 200 meters. Oh no. <laughs> yes. 200 meters, done. Yes. Oh no. She's been cranked it on you the to Do you want to help out with flow track coverage? Awesome America? Yeah, I see that we're like coming. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, let me yes. do that. I'll go ahead and do that right now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, just give me the, give me the go ahead and then I'll go ahead and do it.
store for us over this next few stretch of weeks. We have right now. Do I go again? Welcome back to online. It's Monday, March 25th. This is Deja Vu. I'm Corey Mall, Olivia Ekbenet, and <laughs> Ashley Titians. It's beginning of a weeks-long Relays month. It's a crazy stretch for us over the next few weeks. We're going to be talking about a lot of big meets and moments. Texas Relays is this weekend. We got Florida Relays this weekend. We're going to get into the Penn Relays in, in due time. It's big times here at Mile Split, and we'll get into all that. But before go like past 10, like yes, like 20, or I don't even know it. Is it even on the scale? Is it's it not, on the, on, the scale. it's the not scale. on the scale. It's not on the scale. Shattered. My numbing performance went down in the four by one on, on Saturday in Houston at the Victor Lopez Classic. We'll talk about the FSU relays. We'll talk about other races, APU me of champions briefly. We'll talk about quality performances. We get into all that. But first, we do have to start with that four by one from Umble Atasca Sita. The boys rocked the world of high school track and field on Saturday with a performance for the ages, clocking a new national record of 38.92 seconds in that four by one. They sliced off nearly a second from the former record of 39.76, which had stood since 1998. To say it was a perfect race may be an understatement, I think, at this point. It was a huge moment, and we have that group with us right now. They are Jelani Watkins, Jordan Parker, Landon Fontenot, and Tori Blaylock. Again, 38.92 seconds. Guys, how's it feel, man? It was great. <laughs> Let's talk about this each individually from from Jelani on down the line. Are, are you like what what was the reaction of that that time? You you just skipped past 39 altogether and you went to 38. What did that feel like? And Jelani, we'll start with you. It was sucky cuz going into the race, we didn't we didn't expect it to be that bad, but we know once we executed everything and uh, put everything in God's hands, you know, Go out there and do what we can do, and then let the let the time show. Jordan, what about you? Uh, um, first things first, all glory to God. Um, yeah, like he said, uh, we were just getting ready to execute. Um, I mean, yeah, we really weren't expecting to run that fast, but uh, we knew we were gonna uh, really have a chance to take down that national record that race. And whenever I handed the baton off to Jelani. Um, I mean, the excitement that I had, even before he crossed the line, I just knew we were going to run something really fast. Landon. Yeah. Um, going into the meet, we didn't feel our best the day before running a lot. Um, Coach Irv always tells about execution. That's what we focus on. And when we focus on execution and we do things that Coach Irv do, great things will happen, and I appreciate that. And then Tori, what about you, man? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Um, it was obviously a blessing. Um, this group is special. We work really hard to get to what we're doing now, and we're just showing what we can do. What do you think the X factor was on Saturday in that final? Was there any single thing that you felt was indicative of that performance? What was the X factor? Uh, the level of competition. We had great. It was a great competition. We had Katie Tompkins. They they were pretty fast and we had D Real. So like they were like we were kinda of in the middle of both teams. So they gave us a great push. I love all of that. It almost seemed like you guys were pretty much shocked, but we knew the talent was there. Did you think that you guys were potentially going to break the national high school record like later in the season? If so, like when did you think everything was going to click? That's a great question. Yeah. Oh, did you guys hear me? Yeah, can you ask it again? Yeah, I can repeat it. So I was saying how it almost seemed like you guys were surprised of how fast you went. It was only, I felt like here at Mile Split, it was only a matter of time of like we were going to see a national high school record fall in this event. Did you guys think it was going to happen like later in the season? And if so, when did you think everything was going to click for you? Uh, we pretty much thought it could happen at any time, during any meet. But like at the same time, we didn't expect it to be this early. 
So like when it happened, like in the moment, we couldn't really like take it all in because it had a, like a lot of people rushing up to us and congratulating us. But after it, it kind of hit. So it was kind of surprising. Okay. So we did a deep dive into the world U-20 world record books earlier today, and we saw where South Africa set the mark of 38.51, and this was back in 2021. With that being said, is this something that you guys are now striving for? Is that the next mark that you're looking to accomplish this season? Yeah, absolutely. So um, like Landon already said, we actually did three events. Uh, I think almost all of us did three events the day before. We were actually really sore. Um, we did a lot of things trying to prepare our bodies for the uh, for the race, but I mean, yeah, that that U twenty record is definitely what we're going for. No. We're not focused on time. Oh. Go go ahead. Sorry, go, ahead. Not, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but we are really focused on uh, getting to stick around. If we can stick around, anything can happen. Now, I have a question specifically for, for Jordan, actually. Now, leading up to the, to the season, I believe you were a 400, 800 guy. Like, that's kind of where you were. And now here you are dipping down the short sprints, and you're on this national record-breaking 4 by one team. Talk to me a little bit about, like, you know, what that transition was like and what motivated you to do that, and then, you know, what it feels like to now be a part of this record-breaking team all the way down on the 4 by one um, Yeah, of course. So um, the weird thing about that is me and Coach Irvin – uh, we focused really, really hard on the 8 and 400 in our off season, And um, just whenever we ran 40.37 uh, just for our season opener, uh, that's kind of when we knew, like, hey, we, we really got something here. So that's when I, uh, that's when I changed up from the 800 and, four, uh, and 400. I still run the 400, but I won't be running the 800 anymore uh, throughout high school. Um, and, I mean, that's also a byproduct of why we're getting so much faster is because I'm getting to work on my speed. And, you know, as I work on my speed, um, I mean, things are starting to come together more and more for us. Um, I'm starting to put together a better leg, and I'm starting to be able to uh, catch up to this guy whenever we're handing off. So. Now, and this is a question for all you guys, like, to not only break a record to, that stood for, you know, 26 years, like, you didn't just break it, you absolutely destroyed it. I mean, you, you're the first team to ever go under 39 seconds in, for U.S. high school. Um, obviously that takes a special group of guys, especially for an event like the four by one. That's just like, it comes down to the fine details, like every exchange and all that. Like, what were those fine details you think that went, you know, nearly perfect for you guys on the day this weekend? For me, I say just trusting each other to get the stick around and trusting our, our marks that we take off at the uh, correct time. Tori, I want to go to you, man. Are you a fresh, you're a freshman, right? No, so I'm a, I'm a junior. You're a junior? Okay. I got bad intel then, so you're a junior. Um, <laughs> can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, being in this group and what it takes to succeed within, you know, a foursome? It doesn't just take one person to really, you know, take this four by one to the next level. It's about all four of you guys. So what is it for you? What makes a team in a four by one really tick? Um, yeah, it's a special group. And like Jelani said, trusting our marks and trusting each other. And kind of um, knowing that you got someone else that can um, run too, like just get them to stick, let them work. <clears throat> All of us practice hard, push each other in practice every day, so it's great having guys like this who can push me to be better at practice. Awesome. And Landon, I have a question for you. I feel like you've been getting very strong this season. You've been running a handful of 400 meters to kind of kick off the year. How do you feel like being a part of this four by one is helping you with your individual races and vice versa? So yeah, this season I won't be able to do it like a lot of hundred meter run, hundred meter races and hundred and two hundreds. So working on my speed and the four by one is gonna help me in my four hundred. It's gonna help set me up for the first part of my race, and I know I'm gonna benefit from it. Now this question's for Jelani. Jelani, I feel like we've seen for just so many years now. You've been that guy. Like you, you can do it. We've already seen you go ten two this season in the hundred, I believe. And you're no stranger to anchoring home some, you know, insane relays, you know, at UIL outdoors and and whatnot. You know, here at Victor Lopez, it's kind of per usual. You're the guy anchoring at home. And, like, how have you almost embraced that mentality of being, um, you know, called upon to be the one that's, you know, going to be the guy crossing the finish for your team, you know, time and time again? I mean, it ain't. It's pressure, but it's not pressure. It like, it's, something, it's something I take on because I like, I like being in that position to where I either have to kiss somebody or open the gap. So, like, it's... it's 
I would say it's like uh, I can't find the words for it, but I enjoy it though a lot. <laughs> <laughs> How's it feel to do something that no high school team has ever done before? To enter into 38, like NCAA teams, largely, very few of them go 38 point in the four by one. What's it feel like to kind of be in a special, you know, moment there? Landon, I'll go to you here. It's absolutely insane to us. Like, we're shocked. I don't know we can do this, but uh, like I said, when we get stick around, some bad things will happen. <laughs> did you all celebrate? How did you celebrate? <laughs> But we actually couldn't. Like, we were sitting in a tent, and, like, bro, we actually just ran this, and we were just sitting down, like, shocked. We really couldn't, like, focus on what was going on at the moment. It felt like I didn't even run after the race. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I know it's Monday. This race took place just over this weekend. Just kind of reflecting back on that 4 by one is there anything that you guys wish you could have improved on? And if so, what are some of those things that you're looking to change as you go throughout the rest of the season? Yeah, it's a it's a lot we could improve on. Like we could open up the steps, and like we could have better better exchanges. So yeah, it's a lot it's a lot to improve on. And this weekend is the first time that these four guys all ran on the same relay, so that's another plus. We can all keep working on our handoffs. I think it, it's just uh, an incredible moment. Like I think the 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 thing that we were all kind of talking about in the office is that like. This was so fast that a lot of people didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Did you get any of that? Like people weren't sure if you actually even did it. And what did that say to you about that? Jordan, I'll I'll go to you here. Uh, Absolutely. I mean, it's um, so, I mean, as you can imagine, just with all the uh, the platforms that are posting the time and everything. um, I mean, I've had people message me personally and um, like they, they've asked, like, is this like a real time? Like, did you guys actually run this? Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's flying around right now. There's a lot of people like asking for us to be like genuinely drug tested and things like that, which I mean, it's so crazy because <laughs> you really think about it. It's like when you run so fast that it's like people ask like for you guys to be drug tested for them to believe something. It's like, um, I mean, that's just such a crazy thing. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of like what we've already done, but uh, I mean, like I've said, I just started working on my speed this month because uh, I just now dropped the eight. So um, I'm going to get faster. Uh, Landon's going to get faster. Delaney's going to get faster. Tori's going to get faster. We're going to start opening up those steps. We're going to keep getting better. And uh, like I said, we're, we're going for it all this year. Now, I know you kind of, Jordan, you already kind of alluded to this a little bit, talking just about like how this this time just like, you know, is going all over the place on every platform and everything. And I feel like it speaks to the fact that like, you know, high school athletics, they're, they're a rite of passage for people. When you do something legendary like this, it almost, like, you become a part of history, even if you don't really realize it in the moment. I'm sure that's kind of what you guys are starting to realize now. Like, what do you think this is going to have, you know, an impact for you guys, at least in the short term right now, as you're, you know, still competing? You know, we still got an outdoor season to go as well. Um, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, uh, we're really happy about it, but we're not satisfied by any means. Um, because, I mean, on top of the 4 by one we have our own events that, you know, we're still striving for and we're still trying to win uh, state individual medals, right? And we're trying to win in that 4 by 4 You know, we're, we're going for a lot. Um, I mean, the 4 by one is very special, but, you know, we still got to keep our heads down, keep working, stay locked in, and uh, make sure that we handle business uh, on all three of our events as well, uh, other than just that 4 by one so we can have another interview like this, you know about like our own individual events and after state, you know, about all the great things that we do. Last question. Is there a rivalry with Duncanville at all between y'all? Tori? No. No? No, no, no rivalry. No? no. It's, all, it's all good fun? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Who's the faster city, Houston or Dallas? Houston. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Texas, Texas mom split. I gotcha. Well, um, hey, congratulations. I gotcha. Congratulations so much on your performance. We hope this is the start of something much, much more with you all. Um, thank you for taking the time to talk to us, okay? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. All right.
that was the humble Atascacita boys who broke the national record in the four by one with an absolutely incredible time of thirty eight nine two. We don't want to stop talking about this. No. Just we gotta keep it. No, going. we can't. We gotta you keep stop. it going. You know what? We have the race video. Yes, we do. Let Let's show the race video. Let's bring up the four by one that we're all talking about right now. This moment in history, right here in front of us. And I think that's Blaylock out in the yep. first leg, handing off to Jordan, second leg, longest leg here on the track at Victor Lopez. Actually, I think that's Fontenot right there. I think Fontenot, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Fontenot. You're good. Jordan Parker on the third leg here. He ate that curve up. He did. That's what all he the comments no on social crumbs. say. Zero and crumbs. then here we go, boom! You thought Duncanville was with them, not anymore. Well, they were. I, <laughs> hey, the thing we, the thing we have not even mentioned just yet, but we should, is that Duncanville also ran yes. under the former national record in the four by one. They also went thirty nine six five. Yeah, breaking the record that stood at thirty nine seven six. So, I mean. Let's bring in Will Grundy, yes. who is our Texas editor. He knows much more about this on the, on the Texas angle, and we just want to have a full rounded conversation about just what happened in this four by one. Um, let's start here with sort of the dynamics at play, just how Atascacita latched on to the best performance in high school history. Will, we want to bring you in. Can you hear us? Loud and clear. Perfect. All right. Well, Will, talk to us first about how you think this even came to be. Well, I, I think last year, Tascacita had a lot of unfulfilled potential and they, they lost their coach. And in the, the search for the right person, uh, I think everybody wanted Coach Elton Irvin to be the coach because he used to coach there before. And so when they talked him into it, uh, it's like almost landing on third, waking up and being on third base. Uh, he had all these great athletes, and you get Jelani Watkins to come in. Uh, I think that was the major point um, of that whole thing come together. A new coach, a new runner who was already established, like Olivia was alluding to. Um, and then you just have that explosion of the talent that they were able to, to put out pretty much all season long that they've run. Um, but I don't want to overlook Duncanville, as you just mentioned. They also broke the national record, 39-65, uh, another crazy time. You had Katie Tompkins in there. We've seen them at Texas A&M run some crazy times. Fort Bend Ridge Point, the Woodlands. All those teams are, are running 40 points. And then uh, Fort Bend Marshall was in that race. They were actually handing off first uh, to believe that and on the second exchange. So uh, just a great race. And that's how Texas does it. <laughs> Olivia, let's go to you with yeah. your, you know, your sprint expertise here. What do you take away from this performance from a high school team? It's just mind-blowing to even think about, like, how fast they actually went. You mentioned we only see a handful of, like, college programs going 38 seconds, and here you have four high school kids putting it together. And it, it's just mind – it's just insane to think about. Like, from start to finish, like, their exchanges – looked strong and the fact that Jelani even mentioned like hey we can still improve on that and this is the first time these group of four guys came together so there's always some improvement so now my question is with that being said they did it at the Victor Lopez classic like I'm thinking we're about to see a national record happen like later like states potentially when the the heat is coming and the pressure's on one and done type thing so just from a sprinter's perspective to see how fast they're going now I don't, I, I don't know if I'm going to be surprised again if we see something even more extraordinary once they start fine-tuning some things. This is still somewhat, quote-unquote, early. I know Texas has been going for outdoor for some weeks now, but once they get sharp and they start to peak towards states, I don't well, want people to be surprised. That, that is the question, though, because you hit a legendary performance like this. It is right to ask, will it happen again? Mm -hmm. Because you, you hit magic in a bottle in March. Yeah. Ashley, do you think it's possible for them to now surpass that, that legendary moment or does this stand in time? I mean, I want to say, yeah, like that. I would love to see it go down again, but it's also one of those things where it's like, gosh, it's like so legendary that like, is this just the moment that just like stands in time? You know, like 
that day at Victor Lopez when, you know, like, is that what it's going to be? It didn't be like, oh, do you remember that day in March in 2024 when, you know, they hit sub 39 seconds? Like, it could be that. But at the same time, like, I think it is kind of alluding to, you know, what Will already said earlier. They have the talent and they have the coaching, too, that, like, if there are little things that they need to work on, they can work on that. But it is it definitely does get harder, though, as you're going through districts, regionals, getting to states. Like, it, there is some pressure maybe involved, too. I don't know. Will, we, we spoke a little earlier about executions. Now, we asked Ataskasita a couple times, can you talk a little bit about the intricacies? And they weren't kind of willing to give any of the secrets. But is, or is there anything that you saw out there that contributed to that time? And what allowed them to run uh, under 40? Uh, I think implementing or, or integrating Blaylock, uh, he's just healthy. It's the first time he, he's run with that group this year. Uh, in the prelims, his block slipped. On his second step, he had a whole hand on the ground, believe it or not, and they ran 40.2. But he got – him and Fontenot got the stick through the zone uh, pretty quick, and that let uh, a tall 6'2", 6'3", hopefully I'm not uh, making you shorter than you really are, but a tall runner who's a 400-meter runner run down the back stretch, and him and um, Jordan Parker had a good exchange. But Parker's exchange um, with Jelani – they got the stick through the zone so fast. Those are pretty, pretty three pretty good exchanges that you can't argue with the speed through the zone. Allow these guys to run at top end speed. Is it fair to say like Jordan isn't a true one hundred meter guy? So to find him and put him in a place to succeed like that, that has to be a little bit of a difference maker too. I'm going to be honest. So the comparisons don't mistake my comparison for for Jordan Parker for the wrong reasons uh, for 800 guy, you know, there's not a lot of explosiveness in that. But the guy is quick twitch. He's very fast. He ran, he runs 47 08. Okay. And 21 50 indoors. That's fast, but he doesn't have that power and explosion that you'd like to see yet. He reminds me a lot. And for not the obvious comparisons, but Jeremy Warner, Jeremy Warner was a little bit taller. Um, but he wasn't powerful either. No disrespect to Jeremy Warner, but he was super duper quick and very fast. If you go look at those two run, you might see the comparisons I'm talking about. And having that on third leg and the dude, anytime you come from the 800 man and the coach is asking you to run 100 meters, dude, that's like, yeah, all day, every day I'll do that. So <laughs> I, I think he's he's uh, enjoying that. Yeah, that's light work. A little in the context here, because, you know, if you see this for the first time and you see 38 seconds, you might think, oh, well, maybe it happens all the time. No. The reality is <laughs> sub 40 second four by ones don't happen at all, ever. I mean, I mean, on the rare occasion, you know, looking yeah. back into the numbers. <laughs> I was like, Will's about to chime in here. Will's about to weigh about in. To all right. Chime in. So, so, the, so the reality is, though, when you look at sub 40 times, they've only come from Texas teams. Which is wild. It's right. wild. Texas does it different. They're just built it? different. They're so, built but different. But you look at the U.S. as a whole, sub 40 doesn't happen. So this is a bot magic in a bottle in, in a certain way. Only, you know, t the sub 40 has happened 12 times, and that includes teams that have run more, more than once. Fort Worth, Wyatt ran it sub 40 three times in 1998, and they ended up with a national record. Duncanville is on the list twice. Fort Ben Marshall is on the list twice. And now you have a task of Cita. Now the is is it likely that they'll break forty again? Yes, but I am not so sure that they're going to get to this moment again because there's just so much has to happen for it to go down like that. Will you have some reaction to that? They have. Yeah, we'll the, let Will talk. Yeah, yeah. They, they have the talent to do it. Them in Duncanville. The thing about it is they're not going to do it anytime soon. Mm -hmm. If it happens, it will come at the regional finals or the state finals. If they all make it that far. Because uh, it's going to take that because they're all vying for points. Um, as uh, Jordan and um, Fontenot led to, they want to do their individual events too. So they're going to have 400 to think about. They're going to have to battle Duncanville and Tompkins to the to the end. So if they mix, if you mix those individual events in there, they might not run that fast like you want them to, even though the four by one is first. But you know the logistics uh, at, at the University of Texas is not great. It's not like, hey, Warm up and walk on the track. There's a lot of things going on that with that. But I, I want to address everything online, talking about drug testing, as they just said, uh, cheating, and, and is it real? For, for one, Duncanville, they have 
only one guy in the history of the world high school has run on two different 40 point relays and that's Caden Durham. They did it when he was a freshman or sophomore and now this year. So it's not like flash pan. That Duncanville has three boys who are, well, you have four star Caden Durham. You have two guys in two different classes on that relay who are the top wide receivers in the country. And then a 10-6 guy open on that relay. And when you talk about the task CD, you got Jelani Watkins, everybody knows he's going to LSU, a four-star receiver, I believe. Uh, Fontenot and Jordan are Division One athletes, Iowa and TCU. And then you just heard uh, Tori talk about he's a junior who runs 10-6 open in a negative headwind. Um, Texas is, I mean, dude, I mean, y'all, they're good. We're good. I don't think that's debatable. <laughs> I don't think that's like debatable, Will. Absolutely, you're good. Um, I think the only thing remaining is, is the Tascacita going to win a state title because Duncanville clearly can still beat them on any given day. It, it won't be open and shut case with a Tascacita, even with this in, in their, in their, you know, on their belt now. Mm-hmm. You guys know I'm from Houston. I'm a Houston guy. Um, and and I, I love a Tascacita. I love Coach Irvin. I love those boys. But don't think that Duncanville is going to sit on the side of the road yeah, and think, no. hey, they run 38. We're not going to. They want that. They want that national record. They've been gunning for that all year. But you have a task to see that has to deal with Tompkins. You guys have seen Tompkins, uh, their whole team. So getting out of regionals to the state meet, they have to deal with that there and, and all of that to do, to win the state title. And then Duncanville has to deal with the Woodlands. Um and their regional meet. So it's going to come down to it. And you can't forget about the Woodlands and, and teams like that. It's going to be an outstanding April and May. And if, if you guys love track and field and you're finally tired of that indoor playing around with that stuff, Texas has the entertainment for you guys. Anything can happen on any given day. We, we've seen it at NCAAs. Yep. It's, it's a brand new day at the state meet. So clean slate across the board. And before you guys kick me off, can I just say one more thing? <laughs> Um, <laughs> yes, Will. Go ahead. What, so, uh, what is it about like 10 teams this year in Texas who run uh, 40 point and five others 41 0? But uh, this, it, it's happened before. We've seen it in the early 80s. Uh, Hawthorne and, and Dallas Roosevelt, 83, 84, 85. Talk to somebody who's older and, and saw that. Those guys were running crazy 307s and stuff like that. Um, Fort Bend, um, I'm sorry, Houston, Forest Brook, Beaumont. Uh, Westbrook and uh, Ashley, you may like this New Bern in the in the later '90s, and, and John Muir from California. We've seen this before, and 2024 is, I think, just repeating some of those historical teams with the task seat at Duncanville and, and and Tompkins. Hey, everything's cyclical. Okay, anything else to add, Ashley? I, just to wrap this all up into one little thing, Texas just does it different. It's true. It is true. I know Will said it earlier. I'm from North Carolina. Didn't really expect, wasn't sure what to expect. The hype, it lives up to the hype. Yes, absolutely. It's all different here. Will, thank you so much for for tapping in here. We will talk to you soon, okay? Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Will. All right, thanks, Will. Thank you. All right, good stuff there. We'll keep talking about Texas relays, I think, over the next few weeks. Uh, But let's move on to the FSU relays that happened in Tallahassee this weekend. And there was a duel. Major duel. At FSU between Riley Smith, Patrick Kuhn. What do we see here? Let's go to Ashley first. I mean, this is kind of a duel that if you're a distance runner in Florida, like this is the matchup you want to see, right? You have Patrick Kuhn, who I feel like since his junior year, especially when you look on the cross country side, he's been that top name there. Now you enter Riley Smith in the picture here, I feel like since the indoor season, and you finally get them squaring off in outdoors, and you have Riley Smith who comes away with a 839 PR in the 3200. That's, you know, that's in a remarkable mark there. That puts you up with like some of the best guys in the nation. And then Patrick Kuhn, 842 per second. Like that's a battle. Like you're, those guys were battling for it. And for them to, to put down those, those types of marks too, that's pretty incredible. I feel like, especially since it's March. Olivia. If you watch the race video, first of all, let me rewind. I want to pick you back on what Ashley said. Like Riley Smith caught my attention when he went 404 during the indoor season at the Florida High School Challenge. That's when I was like, okay, who's this kid? <laughs> I need to know more information about Riley Smith. And so when you see this battle between Patrick Kuhn, Riley Smith, like Kuhn was on it. He was leading the race the whole entire time. 
Smith was just kind of hanging tight, letting him do all the work until the last 350 of that race, 250 of that race. And you can just see the difference in stride patterns. Riley Smith is also a little bit shorter than Patrick Coombe, but Riley Smith has that turnover. He had quicker footsteps coming down. Patrick Coombe had the long stride lanes trying to, you know, wheel Riley Smith in once he made his move. But Riley Smith was just gone. He was like the energizer bunny just going. Um, but Riley Smith is that guy. Like, 839, quite impressive for a new personal best. And then, as Ashley mentioned, 842 for Patrick Coon. So they were just battling it out until the last lap and then just went off. New Florida State record. I wrote in a recap this weekend that Riley is on a heater. A heater? He's won, <laughs> he's won eight straight individual races dating back to his indoor season. Wow. The only yeah, lo- remember, we saw him at Milrose. At yep. Milrose, we saw yes. him win there. Yep. And, yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, the only loss he's taken is in a relay in the four by or the DMR at Nike Indoor. I saw that happen. But he nearly took that team back from, from nowhere to win. He's truly on a heater right now. And the question – I kind of have to ask myself is, you know, who is Riley Smith? Like, what is he? Is he a middle distance runner? Because he does have the 800, 1500 meter mile speed. I would probably put him in that category. This 32 really surprised me. Yeah. Because 839 is no joke. Even just four or five years ago, it was Cole Sprout and Nico Young going 840 at Arcadia. And that was a top time in the country. And, and even think last year with guys like, uh, you know, Danny Simmons, Simeon Burma, Arcadia, they mm-hmm. ran, I think, 834, 835. Like this, that would put you right there at the very beginning of that race. Right. And I remember watching that last year and I was like, oh my gosh, exactly. like I was mind blown. So like, yeah. Do we see him like a Nico Young type? Do we see him as a mm-hmm. Drew Griffith or a Daniel Simmons? I don't think people probably put him in that bucket, but they should. Yeah. I, I think I think he is on par with those runners right now. If I'm labeling sort of top runners in the U.S. right now, it's Griffith, Simmons, and Smith. Like, I mean, he's proven it. Yeah. Like, put this in perspective. Like, I just pulled up the all-time list, like, based off what we have in our database. Riley Smith is now number 10 all time. He surpassed Nico, who went 840 flat. So he put himself in this whole new category with this performance, which is crazy. Unbelievable. I'm sure we're going to see more of him down the line. You know, let's also comment on a couple other guys that ran the race. Brady Mullen, uh, he ran 850 flat, I think, improving on his previous best from last year, number two in Louisiana history now. Um, We have Marcelo Menticon, number nine in Florida, History now, I think uh, he ran under nine minutes. Bell and Jesuit obviously is a program to be watch, watching out for. Um, and it just was an overall very, very good race. Now, I, I do want to mention too, APU distance meet of champions. We're not going to talk about it at length, really, but a lot of good performances there. Uh, Braylon Combe and, and Riley Blade, teammates from Santiago Corona, both really killed it this weekend. Combe won the mile in 448 uh, to go US 1, and she's the one to watch because she's a sophomore. Uh, and then we had a lot that that 3200 meter that we talked about last week. Morgenfeld won it, I think, in 843 and really uh, performed well. So we can't go into that, but just wanted to shout that out really quickly. Let's move to the Florida relays. It's this weekend in Gainesville. Top overall marks of the high school season often come from this meet. And this year we have some really, really good entries. We have three storylines. We're going to start with the first one. Mia Brahe Pedersen and Adeja Hodge are both scheduled for the 100. Olivia, what are your thoughts here? Just spicy. I'm all for it. Front row and center popcorn moment. I'm all for it. I think, Ash, we were were talking about this um, in the office earlier today. I think this is going to be the first matchup with Mia and Adesia outdoors since they've been going at it. We've seen them constantly during the indoor season, and then they kind of split for nationals. But here, different setting. Yeah. Not a national meet. This is more of like the bragging rights. I would say it has... It's the up there is a, of a national meet, yeah. right? It's up there for sure. I just think it's going to be interesting, especially with, you know, Mia coming back from injury. I'm just curious about where she is with her fitness level right now. And Adeja has been looking very strong all season long. She's already gone 2358, uh, in the 200 meters. I think she's run a couple of 400s as well. Um, 
so she looks very strong, very confident going into the outdoor season, just based off the conversations we had at New Balance National Indoor. So I'm I'm all for the excitement here in this race. It's gonna be great. Yeah, the last once the last time they faced off was it was it Brooks? No, they didn't. I don't know if they ever have faced. They off. haven't. No, that's what we were trying to figure out. I don't think they have. Shanti, Shanti, yeah, Shanti yeah. yeah. At, Mia at Brooks. I don't know true. if they ever have. I'm I'm actually yeah. have their profiles up right now, and right now I'm trying to match stuff up, and I I don't see anything. Yeah, so I don't think they have. How does this shake out then? In a hundred, if they both meet in the final here, I, I I guess it does depend on like I'm. It's they're both in different points. I feel like of their their seasons. We already know Deja's opened up. She she ran a full indoor season, as you mentioned. You know, really hope Mia's coming back from you know some of the setbacks she had after VA showcase. And so, if they both are you know full strength and they're they're going for something, they decide to toe the line and actually you know go against each other. I think it could be pretty epic if you're looking at. They have pretty similar histories, especially when you look back, you know, not just the 100, but the 200, like they're, they're pretty similar <laughs> in ways. And um, they both have had plenty of experience racing at the senior level as well. We saw Mia run um, at the senior championships last outdoor season and Adesia competed at world outdoor championships. Um, so, yeah, I think that'll be interesting. Yeah. The slowest Mia ran last year was 11.5. That's so that's just for comparison. Out. She's going to start kind of at a level of which most, athletes just aren't right and and we know the florida track is incredibly fast world youth records have been broken here in this meet particularly assam ran really fast last year we'll get into that next but the track does hold a, a lot of you know high regard so when you step onto it and you put two really great performers on it i think great things happen i don't know what the expectations are for either of them but i, I just think it's going to be a good competition and, yeah. and to see a match up that's what we're all waiting for so uh good stuff there let's go to the second storyline here christian miller <laughs> versus kane stanley in the 100 kane opened up at dunbar in the 400 i believe christian opened up with the 200 these guys are meeting in the 100 olivia we'll go to you again Woo! again popcorn moment front row and center be there right christian miller we love that guy. We, we've seen him go 20.51 in person at USATF uh, U20 Championships. He's also debuted his outdoor season with that mark, too. I know the strength is there. I know the speed is there. Kane Stanley, again, I think he is having the season of his life, without a doubt. He Just thinking about New Bounce National Indoors, where he ran 20.79, and it was a little – it wasn't the cleanest finish that he's ever had with the last 50 meters – but here we are going to contest, like you said, in this 100 meters. So there, you can't underestimate, I feel like just seeing Christian Miller, his start is very explosive. So you cannot wait in the blocks because Christian Miller is going to leave you without a doubt. So I think this is a great opportunity for Kane Stanley to kind of get another sense of pressure from one of the top sprinters in the country, and that's Christian Miller. So, again, bring out the popcorn. Iron sharpens iron. We Athlete. know that. So, Ashley – Beyond that, I mean, wh where do we see Kane and Christian, you know, when it comes down to these two facing off? I think it's interesting, right, because it's a storyline of Christian Miller. You're, you have him, the top returner from last year, dueling against arguably the the most improved. and Most br the breakthrough athlete. The breakthrough the athlete, yeah, I think that's probably the best way to say it. So it, it's some intrigue there, right? It's like, can the breakthrough athlete take down the top dog coming into this race? Now, we can't forget – Christian Miller's on 10.06 in the 100. Like he had, like Olivia was saying, he has that speed. But we haven't, I feel like, obviously, we haven't seen Kane run 100 at his best. Like, as we said, he's been that guy that's, he he showed that he belongs to that national conversation indoor season. Now I just want to see what he can run in 100. It looks like his his PR from last year, not wind dated, is right around 10.5, I believe. But I, I know he can go faster than that. So it's just going to matter, if, I, well, I think it'll come down to on the day, them racing each other. What can they get out of each other? Maybe. So if there's any kind of comparison here between, you know, what Kane ran in the 60 to what he might run in the hundred, we can look to Jelani Watkins yeah. because Jelani ran six, six, eight at Milrose. And then he stepped onto the track at blue bunny ran 10 to two. Um, I I'm really curious to see where Kane goes in this race because, you know, he is, relatively new to it like he only ran the 100 a few times last year as you said 10 4 5 win dated 10 5 1 um pr i think he's elevated since then and oh. he's broken through in a big way so yeah. 
you know, we look at Christian Miller. He ran 10-2-2 at the Florida Relays last year. He was behind Asenga, who ran 10-10. You know, Schwartz has run 10-15 on this track. You know, multiple people have broken 10-2. When you put two guys of their stature together, maybe side by side, I, I think you get special things. And, and really, if you, if, you, if you work on that model from indoor and you kind of just, you know, progress it into the outdoor season, I think some big, really big things can happen from Kane Stanley. We did ask a question last week. Who are you taking, Christian Miller or Kane Stanley? Now, have those decisions changed at all for either of you? We asked that question last week? We did, yeah. Yeah, we did. I remember that. You remember who you picked? Yeah. Obviously, Olivia doesn't remember. I remember. Who are you picking now? Christian Miller. Okay. Christian Miller. We are, we all oh, yeah, we Christian. did have this conversation. <laughs> now, we all I picked Christian like, Miller. We had this conversation. We all picked Christian Miller. <laughs> Last and final storyline from the Florida Relays, Bullis School. Traveling from Maryland, 4x2, four 4x4. Four four. What can we expect from the team from Maryland, Ashley? I mean, let me just put this out there. The last time we saw them run for a 4x4 four four national record at New Balance Indoor Nationals, Should do we need to be putting this on national record alert, this event? Maybe. Oh, it's Florida yeah. Relays. You can run fast. It's going to be warm. It's favorable for, for relays and sprints. Maybe. Maybe they're motivated by seeing what Umbel Atascacita did just last weekend, breaking that 4x1 record. But all that aside, we know Bullis is fast. They're going to put together, it looks like, based on entries, some, some top squads in both that 4x2 and that 4x4. You're going to have guys like Quincy Wilson on those teams. So that shows to me that they're at least going to be trying to go after something pretty big. Just thinking, too, that we're only a month away from Penn Relays. I will say this. We didn't think the indoor 400 record would ever go down. It did. We didn't think 4 by one would go down. It yeah. did. Is it too early to expect a national <laughs> record from Bullis? No. No. I'm it's Bullis, no. too. That's part of my notes here. I'm – no. At this point, if records fall, records are fallen this year. That's how, it, that's how I'm taking it. Everyone's yeah. just on a whole different level. But part of me is, like, I know they're building up for Penn Relays. And right. the goal – I mean, yeah, you want to win every race. You want to be competitive and win every race. But the goal is to run the best against the Jamaicans at Penn. Like, you want to save your best for Penn Relays. True. True. That's why I mentioned that we are a month away from Penn Relays. Yeah. <laughs> maybe this is like the tune-up, right? Like, maybe you there. go, like, 309. Just, you know, the stepping stone. To yeah, see, that. I can see a stepping stone. Yeah, because I mean, when you, when you're you're thinking about like training models, mm-hmm. progr- like hitting that peak, you are preparing for you know late April, and well, may- maybe your 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 point now, your peak at this point though could be national record worthy. So and then and then that progresses down toward toward the end of April. I don't know. It really depends because ooh, and it's gonna be hot. Like. Florida, Florida is Florida is ideal for a record. Penn maybe not so much because the elements could yes. contribute to a lot of different yes. factors. Yes, I don't. I don't know if we would see a national record fall at Penn. Just like what you mentioned, weather is never in our favor unless you were at Penn two years ago, three years ago when it was that one day where I was sweating for the first time ever in my life at Penn. But I feel like. Just put it all together. You already know Quincy. We talk about this all the time. He's a dog. Yeah. You know, no pun intended because they're bulldogs. Like, this guy knows how to compete. And he's going to, regardless of what race it is, it could be an 800, it could be the 4 by one That kid is going to go out there and do his thing. And the the bulldogs as a as a program kind of follow that pursuit. So I will not be shocked. But you need, shocked. You need, you need Julian. You need Colin. Right. Eight. That's what I'm saying. The squad. Yeah. The squad. The squad. The squad. Bulldogs. Yeah. I'm not. Oh God. But I it hate, happens. I it hate happens. being the detractor. It's always, fine. Always, I think always everybody. Be, I am always the detractor at this for point. Bullis, but I love Bullis. I. But I have to keep it realistic. I. I think they're a step away. Still, I'm not saying they won't get there, but I think they're a step away now. That I. I think they, they <laughs> win. I think they run really, really well. Yeah. But. I got to be the detractor. I got to put you two in place sometimes, yeah. right? Come on, Corey. I'm with, a little bit of the optimism. <laughs> I'm with Ashley. I'm just thinking about the weather. Why not? If the not, team. actually, no. My prediction, 309. See, I'm right there. I 309. Like 309. I like that. Oh, so we're all in agreement then. 309. 308, maybe. Okay. Okay. So do you want to comment a little bit on this weekend? You will be out in Stanford. Anything to watch out for? 
Sure, yeah. I know we won't go in depth into this preview on this podcast, but you can tune into the Flow Track podcast tomorrow for a full preview of the Stanford Invitational. As Corey mentioned, I'll be on the ground, and so I'll be getting content there. And I mean, it's loaded, especially on the distance side, you know, college, and then there's high school events as well. Um, so it'll be really awesome. So check it out. Stay tuned. Yeah. We're going to move to Texas Relays. We got a couple record attempts that could go, you know, into <laughs> the midst here at Mike Myers Stadium. It's going to be four days of action. Always one of the great events uh, on the calendar. And we got to start with our girl, Elizabeth Leachman. The Bernie Champion sophomore is lined up for the outdoor 5K on Thursday night against Collegians. What are our thoughts on her expectations here, Ashley? Yes, she'll be in a collegiate field, but if you look at the field, Leachman could win this field. Like, she could be all the collegians here, not only win this race, but let's be real. This is going to – could likely be a 5K outdoor national record attempt, and I expect it to go down. Not to put any pressure out there, but I expect this to go down. We just saw her run 15.28 for a national record indoors. That's like three seconds off of that 15.25 outdoor record that Natalie Cook set around this time in 2022. Again, she came only three seconds from besting that time – outdoors indoors so gosh like I, I feel like Leachman like and I, I know I feel like we say this every week almost but when she is able to just walk into a pace and hold it she's really good and then as we saw I feel like at, at Nike even down in the two mile she can really that last mile or whatever whether it's a two mile or a 5k like she can really hone in and you know build some speed I think that's something she's been working on um, since the cross country season at least and so not only do I think she, she break the record, I mean, I could see her going sub-15-20. This is what worries me, though. I, I agree that she could win the race. You know, in previous, you know, national record runs, Jenna Hutchins, Natalie Cook, they were in collegiate fields or professional fields, and they were in the middle of the pack. And they, they didn't have to do the work. They, they went with the group, and it kind of pushed them to that limit. Elizabeth, it seems like she's going to be leading it and she's going to have to be dictating it, which is not outside of her wheelhouse, but it becomes harder. I think if you don't measure it right in the first mile, maybe like just I, she runs so well, I don't think she'll have struggle. She'll, she'll struggle with it. But, you know, there is that fear that if you do kind of go out maybe a little too fast, it could come back to you. Do you have any of those res reservations or what are your thoughts? I spoke, well, also to make note of this too, she is our Kuros Mile Split 50 Athlete of the Year. So I had a chance to talk with Coach Jenny to just get a overview of who Elizabeth Leachman is that maybe we don't know about. Yeah. And one of the things that Coach Jenny shared with me is like, she has been working over the last couple of weeks on like pacing and like, Almost, she's like, I have to pull her back, like literally, because this girl just knows to go. But we're working on hitting certain times at certain points to slow her down so then she can run freely. So when you think about that, I'm like, oh, that's what Jenny's been, you know, Coach Jenny's been working on with Elizabeth is just kind of pulling back. So when we're in these moments, she knows how to go through different race strategies. And just after speaking with Coach Jenny, this is on her radar of breaking the outdoor national high school record that has been on her, I don't know how long it's been on her vision board, but it's there. Um, so this is something that she is striving for. And so I... It's crazy to think 15-20, as Ashley mentioned, that potentially could be something we see from Elizabeth this weekend. I agree. What's the weather? Or what day is this? Thursday night? It depends on the weather. What's Thursday the weather like? evening. 76. Yeah. I mean, but it's feeling pretty good in Austin lately. Yeah. yeah lately, um, it's been feeling great. It's not going to be overbearing heat, as we yeah. normally get. So, it, you know, it will be ideal, even compared to UIL state championship time when it gets really hot. Mm -hmm. I, I Obviously, we all believe in her. Um, you know, I think it, it's sometimes good to come in here with tempered expectations. You don't want to like press the world onto somebody, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but she does have that opportunity in front of her, and she has been able to capitalize in recent weeks on it. So it really will come down to Elizabeth on the day. What do I got? How do I prepare for it? Are you ready to go? I think she will be. So we're gonna be pulling for you. We'll be out there. Livy and I will be, be on yes. the track. Corey and I will be we'll out there with the squad. Hand. I am making sure I am in the building to <laughs> watch this. If this means I have to take a nap, because ten like isn't the race like nine something at night? It's late. Yeah. Ooh, it's your girl's in bed by eight, so I'm gonna have to take a little. <laughs> power nap. I'll get a I'll get a 
Instagram reel of you sleeping. Yeah, there we go. And then I wake up right before. breaks the record, and then there's you sleeping. There I am. I'm awake. (laughs) Ready to go. pajamas. (laughs) Next up, Adam Burleson uh, out in Lubbock, I think. Lubbock area. Yes. Amarillo. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's going after a time in the men's mile at the Texas Relays against collegiates. And uh, we like our guy, Adam. We think he's fast, and we think he can run well here. Ashley. Yeah, I mean, we've seen – I feel like – Last year, Burleson was one of those guys that, that came out of some of that, you know, he had that emergence, right? Like we talk about kind of Kane Stanley. I, I kind of compare him almost like that to what we saw from him outdoors. I mean, he only almost broke four four minutes in the mile at running lane uh, track championships. But a lot of that breakout came after he ran, I believe, a collegiate 1500 at the Longhorn Invitational last year on that Texas track. And so now he's going to come again this year not to the Longhorn Invitational, but he's coming to the Texas Relays in this collegiate men's mile. And he's coming off an indoor season where he had a big best of 4.05. Uh, most recently ran 4.08 in, at New Balance Nationals Indoor. And so he's not only going to try – well, if you look at the, the field, right, I think his, the game plan here is you're going to be trying to hang with some of Texas's top guys, right? Like Texas has a strong contingent in this race. And, um, you know, if you're him, you probably just got to work off of them and maybe you try to get close as four as pop- possible. I'm sure sub four is on the mind and, um, you know, it's going to be interesting. I think we're all locked in because we all have the same notes. Yeah, we do. Oh, we Adam do? Burleson. Yes. I'm like, yes. actually, I feel like it's reading my yes. notes right now. Yes. <laughs> what I have down. No, but we're I, all on the same page. I, I think, you know, when you have something that that's so, I think, I don't know, it feels familiar. We all feel the same with him. Yeah. It kind of happened. He kind of moved with it. You know, he has this this rush of expectations and re- and then results. Now now the bar's higher. The goal pass, the goal posts have moved for him. He seems to run better with athletes that are older than him, right? He he ran a couple XC races over the fall. Like he doesn't look like a typical high schooler either. Like he just feels built a little differently. Mm-hmm. So I think this he welcomes in this type of competition against guys that, you know, challenge him. I mean, not to say that high schoolers don't challenge him, but maybe he's just the type of person that needs a different kind of, like, response to something. Yeah, that makes sense. And I think we hear it, too, from a lot of the high school athletes. Like, I think about Sadie and, you know, last year with Shanti. They get more nervous for the high school races because, it's again, it's your your peers. It's the same people in your age group. But then – when they're racing against college and pros, they're like, oh, there's no no pressure. I'm just out here. I'm not trying to be in their way. They're not trying to be in my way. We're just out there competing. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do we think? He's going to be in the mile. Do we think he gets close to his PR, 403? What do we What do we think? My question was, can we see a sub four from him? I don't think we see sub four on the track. No, okay. I don't think we see it personally. Maybe close, you know, 402. Yeah. Or two. Yeah. I like that. Because yeah. I mean, because when you look at the New Balance best. Grand Prix race indoors, he was kind of on pace for it. And then that last 400 kind of got off the pace. Right. So you still need a little bit more, I think, fine tuning mm-hmm. to get to that. And I think he is among the couple of guys that will contest for a sub four, you know, in those months. Is it now? I don't think so. Okay. Personally. See, I was it's still more. March. Yeah. It's still March. It's yeah. still early. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking 402. Okay. It's a great place to be. That's fair. We're, 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 we're lucky, by the way. We see 402s on the regular. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I get, know. We get spoiled. We get spoiled. World U20s. Final final segment here. World U20s, XC, in Serbia this weekend going down. We have a bunch of American high schoolers who are going to be running for Team USA. They include Zario Machia, Ali Zeeland, Mary Bonner Dalton, Ellie Shea, and on the boys' side, Berkeley Nance of Virginia. Any thoughts here uh, repping Team USA in Serbia, Olivia? I'm excited to see Mary Bonner Dalton. Same. Because I think just after seeing her at Adidas Indoor Nationals. Gamer. She's ready. Like, she was there trying to get some foot speed work in, and boom. I'm just... I think she's ready. I think she's going to surprise a lot of people. She's more competitive than I gave her credit for. Yes. Yeah. I think that's it. Like, yeah. Really wants to win. <laughs> that's what I love to hear. Yeah. yeah. Those Actually, are the best types of athletes. You, you know who's also a gamer? Zariel Machia. She is. True. I, I think True. I think that it's you're bringing a group of pretty competitive people, I feel like, to – at least especially on that girl side, I think, to, you know, representing Team USA at World Cross, you have them too. 
you have Allie Zeland who who did really well at New Balance. I believe she won that that two mile there. I, anything's possible, you know. It, it's kind of one of those weird situations where, it, like, it's so weird to think about. Like, we're talking about cross country right now. I mean, it's almost I the know. end of March, and we're talking about a cross country race. Like, these athletes have, in a sense, you know, had to you know switch their focus to the track for a bit. And now it's like, all right, you got to switch back. And it's it's almost like you you just got to have the right mindset to be able to shift back into. Like, I feel like you, you have to lock it in a different way for a track, right? Like, I feel like for a track race, it's like, at least for how I kind of see it, it's like, it's easier to be, um, you know, just locked into the laps. You know, you kind of find your groove and you go with it. Cross country, anything can happen in like different, you know, in different parts of the course and stuff. And sometimes you're just trying to pass athletes. So I think it's, it's going to come down to those athletes that can really just shift yeah. that mindset a little bit. Last year, I think both teams podiumed. They were third, I think, uh, at, at their races in Australia, Bathurst. You know, and I, I generally think in cross country on the international level, you know, America's behind mostly. They're not considered the favorites. Mm -hmm. So these athletes will have to enter into an environment where they are not looked at as like the intimidating factors, mm -hmm. you know, which is good in a way because you race up at that in that in that moment. Um, but also you got to learn how to fight then because, you know, you're going to be at a deficit probably pretty early on. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it was Leo young last year was the top American on the boys side. We got Cole Matisson, mm -hmm. Kevin Sanchez, Kevin Sanchez. Kevin. uh, we got a bunch of guys that now are in that, that veteran role, yeah. right? The oldest in charge and hopefully they step up, become leaders and then take that back to their college programs. Yeah, Absolutely. And I, I, one last thing, Allie Zeeland, I think is the forgotten athlete. She's a superstar. She is, but she doesn't often get the credit as such. I think she could lead this team personally in, in this race. And I think she, you know, she could finish top 10 in my book. I think Al, I'm counting on Allie Zeeland to run really well. I'm right there with you. Okay. I like Allie Zeeland. Cool. Well, this has been a great show. Another show of On the Line. Obviously, we're here on Monday. We will be back next Monday as the time slot has changed uh, for, for the show. Stay tuned for all of our coverage as we'll be out in the Texas Relays at Stanford Invitational over the weekend. And we will see you next time on Monday. See ya.